So what we're looking at here is just a custom visual force page that's pulling in all the records stored to this recipe object using a standard set controller and a simple page block table. If you wanted to style this page to look like Twitter Bootstrap, you could go to getbootstrap.com, download the resources here, and then upload it as a static resource. You can do that by going into the setup, typing static resources into the quick find, and then creating a new resource to store the zip file to. By creating this resource, we'll then be able to reference the zip file and all of the components and files within these folders from within our Visual Force page. Once it's uploaded, we can go back to getbootstrap.com and choose the template we want to work with on the Getting Started tab. You can choose any template you want, and once you've selected it, you can go into View the Source and copy out all that raw HTML to build our page off of. Head back into the Developer Console and create a new Visual Force page. Name it whatever you like, I'm going to call this one Bootstrap, and then paste all of that code in between the page tags. You'll also need to change the page tag to include a couple attributes that you might need. Like for example, setting the sidebar to false to remove the sidebar, remove the header, and you'll need to remove the standard style sheets. Also be sure to include a standard set controller if you need it. Then go through the page and start deleting the different aspects that you don't need. Like for example, maybe custom styling, uh, debugging, references or stuff for IE9 if you're not using that. And then I'm also just going to take out the header and the, for the navigation and the jumbotron because I don't necessarily need it. We're going to follow the example below in a little bit. Don't forget to close out all of these meta tags because Visual Force is pretty strict in that it requires that you close every tag that you open. Finally, we're going to need to modify this link reference to the CSS to reference our static resource. You should use the Apex style sheet tag because you're going to be referencing a CSS style sheet, but if you were referencing JavaScript, you could use Apex include script. Now, for the actual link itself, we're going to need to use a URL for, as well as a little bit different nomenclature for referencing uh, a file within a zip file. By referencing the resource.bootstrap and then also this file extension, it's going to know to grab the URL not only for the resource, but also for the specific file in the CSS folder within it. Finally, let's close out this tag and then save it to see where we're at. By going back into the browser and changing the URL to slash apex slash bootstrap, we'll get to view our Visual Force page. It looks a lot like what we've seen so far on getbootstrap.com, so we're almost done. We just need to make it dynamic. Now, let's remove two of these static uh, elements and then change this one cell to work off of our standard set controller. By pasting in an apex repeat, we'll be able to iterate through this recipe variable and then also create a new cell with that same div class for every individual record, populating the form elements with fields from each of those specific records. By saving this and then going back into the browser, we'll be able to see where we're at right now. We can see that this list is now reformed using the standard set controller and it even has the form factor for a mobile device. Totally responsive.